M0FXB, let's use Chirp with our Badgerton 8300, 7800, also Radtail 920 ETC. So the first thing you need to do is on the right hand side here, I'll put the link in for what we call a Chirp module. So down here, if you click where it says module, you get this module download. And the link, of course, will be in the description. Then download Chirp in the usual way. So I'll show you that Just on the left here. Go to download Chirp. Of course, the link will be in the description. And then click here and you're going to download Chirp and run that in the normal way and open it. The next thing you do is at the top here. Go down from help and see where it says developer mode. Just click it and a small tick will appear to the left of it. You'll get the warning, just go yes, click OK, and then when you look again, you'll see developer mode. Now, nice and easy, across to the first one, which is file, load module, click yes, go straight to your download, double click the module that you've just uploaded. So now, when you open the radio, now I've had to do it using the Radtail selection, so you go, Radio, download from radio, Radtel, there's no budget on there, not that I can see anyway, 920, select your com, and the cable is a fiver, I'll put a link in the description, so there's the cable for a fiver, look, and um, so back to chirp, right click on your device manager so you know your com number, plug the cable into the radio in the normal way, you don't have to put it into any mode, just plug it in, turn it on, device manager, and then here we're just looking for our port number after the cable's been plugged in, COM3, so we know we're on COM3 there, select that with the drop down, Radtel, models, there's all the different models, I've just, like I said, put in 920, but look, there's the 470, 495, 620, there's all kinds of models there that they've created this module for. Click OK and it reads. And I've already added lots of memories into my devices. And you'll see as it reads, it says program. And I've tested it on both devices. The only difference between the two is the 7800 has more buttons. It has a v dedicated VFO memory and A and B button. Where on the 8300, you have to press and hold the OK or the exit for to get those functions. So that's it. So once we read completely, you'll see that there's all the memories that I've added. Of course, to add a, to add a repeater, uh, it's quite straightforward. Say number two here, just double click. 145.750. That's, and then to the right of that, GB3WR, tone, and that is also 94.8 tone, so to the right tone, select your power, and that's it really, plus or minus shift, so we want minus there where it says duplex, put a 6 in front of the naught dot, and if you were on a 77, you wouldn't put a 6, you'd put um 7.6, that's so that when you transmit it shifts, okay? I think I got that one wrong, didn't I? Da -da -da -da. Let's do that again. 145.750. Hopefully that's better. Minus shift and six. That's it. Let's put an air try an airband one. One three three dot. Of course it'll never transmit on airband. And that has gone in. So let's go air. And then we don't need tone on that any because it doesn't transmit. AM is selectable by the looks of it. AM. And that's it. So then we can, we got banks here. If you want to move around these channels and put them into banks, you've got 15 banks there. All the settings that you would expect to see, like your light, timeout, backlight, Roger Beep, all that kind of stuff. Turning on the FM radio, enabling your your Bluetooth, super mode, which is like sort of unlocking it as far as I can see, your buttons, it's all there. So I wouldn't click the browser or the info one. And then so once you've got that, and if you wanted to really add loads of channels, you just go to radio just here at the top. 
uh, radio, down to query source, and down to say repeat a book. And then you do like a little put your location and then click OK and it gives you a whole new tab. From this tab you can copy and paste. You don't have to copy the whole lot. You can copy channels and then you can put them into the, the main first list. This is, this is the one that's going to be sent to your radio. Uh, I've got pretty sure if you try and send it from here it won't let you. Let's try it. Upload to radio. Yeah, it won't. You have to copy and paste from this. And remember, you got all, if you go edit, you've got copy, paste, select or delete, move up, move down. You've got lots of things you can do, like here where I've created lots of um, channels. I've got gaps here. So let's go here and then we'll go edit. Let's go move up, you know. See that? And go like that. Uh, edit. Oops. We had edit move up just now. Now I've lost it. There it is there. Okay, but you get the idea, you can copy and paste. And then, and this is what you, you know, this is what you can't do, as far as I can see, with the original software from Radtail and Badgerton. I've done some videos uh, installing the latest firmware, so mine are all working well, they're working well on the HF bands. The thing that I'm not seeing are the sort of the RAID, the HF radio devices, you know, when you go into HF mode, you can name them, you can do that with the original software. I'm seeing DTMF. But anyway, otherwise, just go at that and go upload to radio. I still think it's very useful for adding lots of repeaters because it's probably one of the most common questions I get is how do you add lots of repeaters, you know, to a, ra a radio? Because like people buy them, they turn them on. The default frequencies and memories that they put in there don't tally with what we'd use in the UK. And then like, oh, I've got to enter them one at a time. Well, to look up every single repeater is it's daunting. Now, so this, uh, you know, having being able to just use repeat a book that, as I just did like that, it's going to save a lot of time. Anyway, they're good. They are good devices, these, and they I've noticed that they work pretty good on the HF bands. Uh, let's see if I can get one of these into HF mode. Try the badge. Let's try this one. There it goes. And it does work well. The fine tune's working now with the latest badgerton firmware as i said i've made videos and you just need a long while if you want to hear the sort of hf stuff and it's never going to transmit on cb upper sideband lower sideband or am ever ever so stop asking that um but for listening to the hf bands works great bye for now all the best